Man, I don't even know if this has started yet. Guess I'll know in a minute. Well now, look at me, there I am. Acting all goofy and stuff. Mm -mm 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 -mm. I'm just chilling for a second. I'm tripping out on this feed that's like, probably like what, like eight seconds behind what I'm doing. <laughs> My jams! I'm slipping. Gotta find my tunage. What's it gonna be? Well, since I I forgot to, to pull up my tune, I'm just gonna go to my go to my standby, man. I'm gonna go to my my old school disco funk jams. You know how we do. Hold on a second. Be up there in just a second. Give you guys like a moment to like, you know. To gather around, gather around, and bring it in. Get this uh, this Bible trip party started. Oh man, I don't know if I could. Could I? Could I ever actually have a church? People like walk in and they got like, you know, got some heat wave playing or earth, wind, and fire, tower of power. I'd get. I'd probably just get a lot of. Got to get a lot of mail. And oh, this is not how you do church. Like, I. Uh, right now, my behind can't concentrate. I'm still trying to get to this list so I can have you some jams. Nope, that's not it. Almost there though. I'm getting the hang of this. Bam. There's my list. No, not the commercial. I don't want the commercial. I want to get straight to. There it is. Get down, get down. All right. What's up? What's up, my usual, the usual suspects? I see Janelle up in there. How you doing, buddy? All right. What's up, Daniel? We are coming in. There it is. There it is. That's right. Got some, got some, somebody's already making a request for Earth, Wind, and Fire. They are in the playlist. We might get to some of that. Okay. All right. So where are we going to pick up from? Where are we going? It's going to, uh, just to give you a heads up, it'll be from uh, Mark. Mark 15. Mark 15. I'm going to start right at the top of Mark 15. And uh, before we get started, man, hope you guys have had an awesome week so far. Thursday was, uh, the top of Thursday was great. Started right at midnight. Did another fast, right? Me and my woman, we didn't even have to talk to each other. We just talked, and we talked to each other in stomach grumblings. How you doing? Oh, really? Oh, is that right? Right, yeah, that's what we did. But, uh, you know, we, we pulled off another fast. And, uh, you know, just, just the Lord giving us a picture of, uh, you know, just, you know, you know, hungering for the kingdom, you know, and uh, a little taste of how uh, sweet that day is going to be. You know, we want we want as many people to jump into that party as possible. That's kind of why we, you know, it's a big part of why we do this, you know. And uh, so, you know, we just came off of that. So this coffee is tasting extra special good, mm, you know. And uh, but speaking of which, y'all, you know, what, what do we have? Uh, Earlier on this uh, this week, you know, uh, got some Wiccans out there talking about uh, invoking demons and whatnot. Need to say people who try to say that we Christians are ridiculous for praying that they're gonna turn around and pray to, to idols, pray to false gods, you know, un not knowing that they're praying to demons. Even if they think they're they're maybe like white witches or something like that, or you know, they're they're the good kind of witch. They're like the the Elizabeth Montgomery witches. You know, they're the uh, you know, they're the witches in the, in the Wizard of Oz or something like that, being like a good witch or whatnot. You know, I assure you, a house is going to fall on you. 
you know, the house of God will fall on you for what you're doing. And, uh, you know, the, the ruby slips, uh, ruby slippers are going to get snatched up. Uh, but look here, you know, but at the same time, you got to give it to him, man. You know, I think that's something that's uh, that's a clue that, uh, you know, we Christians should be rolling with. Uh, you know, a lot of time, you know, we think we're going to solve this stuff by our own intellect. And, uh, and God wants us to use our intellect. He tells us that he wants us to love. Uh, Jesus says, love your God with all your mind, you know, soul and strength. And uh, so we are supposed to apply our minds. We are supposed to apply our intellect to this. So, uh, but the thing is, y'all, too many of us, you know, and I'm guilty of it too. I do it sometimes also. We try to think that, you know, we're going to slam these people with this argument that's going to make them change their minds and, and, uh, and um, you know, get them to see the error of their ways and all that sort of stuff. Um, you know, by our own intellect, no, guys. A lot of times what we'll do is we'll probably end up making things worse. We got to pray, man. You know, we got to pray. Pray to the one who blesses us with the, blesses us with, us with the intellect to grow in the first place. Lean on the Lord, pray. We're supposed to love our enemies. But I see too many times, you know, we get out there, we try to, you know, berate, you know, those who are, uh, you know, in opposition to us. And, uh, you know, we want to just, you know, call them stupid and call them idiots and, and whatnot. And yeah, I agree. Their views are, they do come, tend to come off stupid and idiotic. Um, but we're still supposed to love them. And before we get out there and just respond to them, we should be prayed up. To respond to them, uh, you know, through a filter of God. Jesus is sympathetic to this, y'all, because Jesus, man, Jesus is the original face palmer. The original. Jesus was like, you read the Bible, you're like, oh, man, how long do I have to suffer with you people? You know, Jesus, he, he, people got on Jesus' nerves and he, and he, and he, vo and he voiced it. He let people know, you're getting on my nerves. So, you know, and Jesus, <laughs> but Jesus spent a lot of, a lot of time praying so he didn't just, you know, just full on bring the wrath of God down on these people because they were just really getting on his nerves. So, um, but we got to pray, man. You know, this, this, is, this is what will, you know, heal, heal the world, um, you know, to the best that the world can be healed. You know, this ain't heaven, but you got to pray, you know, lean on the Lord, use him as the filter. And through that, respond with the intellect that he has blessed you with. Go ahead and make your arguments. Yes. Y'all, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta pray and 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 take the higher road. All right, so that's a little bit of what was on my mind that was going on this week. We'll go ahead and jump into fifteen here. Uh, let's see what we got. Let's see what we got. Okay, Jesus faces Pilate. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests had a meeting with the elders, scribes, and the whole Sanhedrin. After tying Jesus up. They led him away and handed him over to Pilate. Let's see. So Pilate asked him, are you the king of the Jews? And he answered him, you have said it. Hey, now, right here, let's, so we, just so we don't get confused, there's, you got a couple of people who asked Jesus who he is. You got Pilate here who asked him if he's the king of the Jews. You got Caiaphas who asked him, are you the son of the blessed one? And Jesus' response both times is, you have said it. Yeah, baby, that's me. Right? You said it, Jack. Right? So he's, he's letting them know that, yeah, I am the son of God. I am the king of the Jews. Yes, on both accounts. So he answered them, you have said it. And the chief priests began to accuse him of many things. Then Pilate questioned him again. Are you not answering anything? Look how many things they are accusing you of. But Jesus still did not answer anything. So Pilate was amazed, like, man, all right, all right, you got some, you got some onions, man. I don't know what's going on with you. Okay, so at the festival, it was Pilate's custom to, re to release for the people a prisoner they requested. There was one named Barabbas, one, uh, let's see, named Barabbas, who was in prison with rebels who had committed murder during the rebellion. The crowd came up and began to ask Pilate to do for them as was his custom. So Pilate answered them, do you want me to release the king of the Jews for you? For he knew it was because of envy that the chief priest had handed him over. We talked about this a little bit on the last one, right? That, that um, you know, they were, they wanted this execution 
they, they really wanted to savor this execution because they, they, they did not want Jesus uh, to, to fulfill his uh, threat to their power. But the chief priest stirred up the crowd so that he would release Barabbas to them instead. Okay, so now, I talked about this before. Um, we have, at the end of the thousand year reign, the millennial reign of, of, of Christ, Satan is going to be released. He's going to be bound for a thousand years and he's going to be released. Guys, this wasn't the first time that Satan has been bound and been released. Remember, Satan is, is a three, he's a three strike loser. He's going to get his third strike. After the millennial reign, he's going to get his third strike. But right here, this is a picture of it. When people wonder why, it's like, why would, if God is so smart, why would he release Satan again? Well, it's not the foolishness of God that releases Satan. It's our foolishness that gets Satan released. Just like right here, this is a picture of what is going to happen in the millennial reign. People are going to demand that Barabbas is released in the face of someone who has done them no wrong, they're going to choose a murderer. Why? And, and they're happy with why he's a murderer. He murdered for their cause. And, and right now, the, the cause of the Jews are lost. They're, 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 right now, their desires are totally selfish. They are not part with God. And don't get me wrong, because you know I love my Jewish brothers and sisters, but right here it's letting you know that their mindset is not on the things of God. And right now, they want a murderer who murdered, you know, murder is just wrong, but this guy would kill him for the wrong reasons. Just like Satan is a murderer. He, but he thinks he's righteous, though. Satan thinks he's totally righteous. This guy thinks he's righteous. The ones who want him free think he's righteous. They want him set free. This is a picture of why Satan will be released. Uh, God is going to honor our free will. He's going to honor it. He's going to honor it until we have absolutely no excuse to not see the truth anymore. We're going to have a millennial reign of Christ. Jesus will make himself present. He will reign with an iron scepter. And you're going to want this. I know it, sound, it may sound kind of, kind of, kind of mean, right? Jesus is going to rule with an iron scepter. I don't mind it because Jesus is the truth and the truth sets us free. It'll be a freedom like we've never known. And not, not a selfish kind of freedom, freedom where we get to satisfy our, uh, we're free to self satisfy our every selfish desire. Because when people do that, somebody else has to pay the price for it. This is going to be a totally different kind of freedom. So it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a freedom that's going to be very foreign to other people if you're not in Christ. See, I feel in Christ, I feel totally free. And, it's, it's, and like I said, it's a selfless kind of freedom. And uh, on a side note, on a, uh, on a, on a, on a kind of a little bit of an astronomy note, um, what's up, y'all? I see people coming in. Hey, there's my baby, CJ. How you doing, girl? Ryan, Ryan up in there. How you doing, man? Okay, you would think that, okay, Jesus is going to rule with an iron scepter. Why not rule with a, with a gold scepter or a platinum or a you know, plutonium or something like that? How come you ain't going, you know, how come you ain't going to have some, a rod with some bling, Jesus? Why the, why the iron scepter? You know, I don't know. Just, just kind of relating this to, to astronomy. Um, you know, when a star, when we think of iron, iron is, is, is so powerful. The iron molecule is so powerful, y'all, that uh, if a star, if a star develops the iron molecule, that star will collapse in a minute. Iron molecules will just will, will bloom into like critical mass and it will cause the star to become unstable and the star will slam into itself. So when I think of Jesus with an iron scepter, this is a guy who's, who's has the, who, not only am I the one who has the power to create stars, I can blow out stars. I can blow out stars like a young kid can blow out a couple of candles on a birthday cake. That's Jesus. That is the power of Jesus. So we will be ruled by that dude. And it will be a peace, a period of prosperity, a period of joy, joy like the world has never known. But you are still going to have those who are still going to say, we want to give Satan a try. Let him loose. Satan will be released and he'll deceive the nations and people will follow him because selfishness will get in the way. They're not free from their selfishness. So right there is a little picture 
of what's going to happen. People at the end of a thousand years, just like they're choosing Barabbas over Jesus now, after a thousand years, people will choose Satan over Christ. All right, let's move on. Um, for he knew, okay, we read that. Pilate asked him again, then what do you want me to do with the man? The one you call the king of the Jews. Again, they shouted, crucify him. Then Pilate said to them, why? What? what, what why? Why? What did he do wrong, man? What's, which, why, why are you tripping? Um, what did he do wrong? But they shouted, crucify him. All the more. They willing, they're willing to gratify the crowd. Pilate released Barabbas to him. And after having Jesus flogged, he handed him over to be crucified. Man, excuse me. Um, I got him. Okay. Now, let's see. You know, because uh, right here, Pilate's like thinking, look, man, maybe if we beat the crap out of Jesus, you know, maybe they'll show some sympathy for him. But uh, no, that didn't work. So then the soldiers led him away into the courtyard, that is headquarters, and called the whole company together. They dressed him in a purple robe. Some gospels say it was a scarlet, scarlet robe. Um, twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on him. And they began to salute him. Hail to the king of the Jews. They kept hitting him, hitting him on the head with a reed, spitting on him, getting down on their knees. They were praying homage. And so, you know, totally giving Jesus the diss treatment. And uh, so when they had mocked him, they stripped him of his purple robe, put his clothes on him, and led him to crucify, and let him out to crucify him. They forced a man coming in from the country who was passing by to carry Jesus, carry his cross. He was Simon, the Cyrenian, the father of Alexander and Rufus. And they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull. Now, right here, <laughs> isn't this just like, isn't this just like Democrats? Isn't this just like liberals? This is just like them. Those Romans, they could have helped Jesus carry that cross. But no, they forced somebody else to do it. And that's just liberals. Forcing somebody else to pick up for somebody else. If this, you know, they try to use the argument about a, a abortion. You know, you, you, you conservatives are so against abortion, but when it comes time to adopt, you don't want to do it. It's like, look, you, no, you don't understand. You guys are so pro-choice, yet you don't want to be, you don't think that a person who makes the choice should be responsible for their own choices. You want somebody else to carry the cross of somebody else's choice. You want somebody else to carry the cross of somebody else's burden. You put a burden on people and then want somebody else to carry the cross for it. This is, this is liberals like all day. This, this right here is a picture of the mindset of, of collectivism, the mindset of socialism, communism. Um, this selfish mindset and self-righteous mindset that a person thinks that they're so righteous and that they're so good because they force somebody else to pick up the burden of somebody else when they could have helped themselves by their own will, not by uh, force of the state. Let's see. Um, now, and they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means skull place. They tried to give him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. Okay, remember guys, remember we were talking about um, when Jesus was saying that um, I would no longer, for this point, I will no longer drink wine. Until the day, you know, when I drink it in a new way in the kingdom. Jesus could not take a, partake of the Passover wine. It was, it was Passover. If he, took a, if he partook of Passover, the Passover wine, death would have passed over him. And he wouldn't be able to meet death to beat death. Right here, once again, they tried to give him wine mixed with myrrh. And he could not take it. I mean, you just imagine, Jesus is like crazy thirsty right now. And he's, he's, been, he's practically bled out. Blood and water is just, is just being just stripped out of him. And, and at this point, it's, it's, it's going to be co you know, collecting here. So he's, 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 just, he's just dehydrated. Tongue sticking to the roof of his mouth and stuff. You know, trying to have to basically suck his tongue off the roof of his mouth. But he won't drink the wine. He won't drink it. He can't drink it. If he drinks the wine, he had gone through all that for nothing. All that for nothing. Because death would have passed over him. They divided his clothes, casting lots for them to decide which would get it. 
Now it's now it nine in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge written against him was the king of the Jews. It's a mockery, making a mockery of Jesus. Um, and also, um, probably where, as far as uh, uh, the governor was concerned, he's like, look, man, you don't be trying to be king up, up in my district. You know, that, there's your crime as far as I'm concerned, trying to be king up in here. But even then, it's like, look, I, I don't find any fault with this guy. I guess if I have to stretch to find some sort of charge to bring against you, I, I guess I'll charge you to be, I don't, I don't see you as much of a king. I really don't. You know, but hey, you want to call yourself kings of the Jews? Fine. I'll, I'll go ahead and slap this charge on you. Yeah. Okay. They crucified two criminals with him, one on his right and one on his left. So the scripture was fulfilled that says, and he was counted among outlaws. Those who passed by were yelling insults at him, shaking their heads and saying, ha, the one who would demolish the sanctuary and build it in three days, save yourself by coming down off that cross. In the same way, the chief priests with the scribes were mocking him to one another saying, he saved others. He cannot save himself. Oh, wow, man. It's like, okay, so you guys, <laughs> you guys sat there. You, you're right here. You're testifying that you know that he could save others. You saw him perform miracles. You saw him do it. And that wasn't enough for you. You're testifying right now. The people who are happy to see him get killed are testifying that they saw him save others. But he can't save himself. Jesus didn't come to save himself came to save us, but they're, they're missing it. Jesus don't need rescuing. Um, he could, Jesus even says, look, man, I got, I got legions of angels who can come and, 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 and swoop me on out of here. I can go ahead and walk up to the sky if I want to, but, you know, I, I, and just leave y'all behind and, and just let, you know, every one of y'all go to hell. I, I can do that, but I ain't going to do it. I ain't going to do it. And um, so they're not seeing, they're not seeing the selfless act of what he's doing. They're so selfish that they, they, don't, they don't know selflessness when they see it. So he cannot save himself. Yeah, actually he can. The Messiah, the King of Israel, come down now from that cross so that we may see and believe. Wow, is that, is, you know, how much, is, oh, is, really, is that, is that the truth? Like, like, really, Jesus, like, really, really? So if I come down off this cross, you'll finally believe? I had to go through all this, look at all this blood, man. You, I, you guys, you guys really did me dirty. And, and really this one more thing that I do is going to cause you to believe? I don't think so. I don't think so. But I'll do you one better. I will die on this cross. You will all see me die on this cross. And then I'm going to come back. He's going to beat death. The, the, the ultimate thing that a king can do. Jesus the king is going to conquer everything that no king can conquer. Jesus is going to conquer poverty. War, famine, death, everything that we wish could be conquered, everything that we wish would stop, Jesus will conquer it all. So when Jesus comes back from conquering death, he proves that, yeah, I conquered death and everything else that gets on our nerves will be brought to an end too. Let's see. So I believe that dude. And so we got, oh, 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 where did it go? Um... Okay, almost there. Can I say it was? <laughs> I lose my place so fast, man. Um, let's see. All right, the death of Jesus. Here we go. Here we go. All right. When it was noon. Ah, uh, hold up. Damn. Okay. Sorry about that. Bring this up really quick. Okay. Um, now, when it was noon. Dark now, now right here, right off the right off the bat, when it was new, they want you to know that it's high new. It's it's daytime. It's it's high, it's it's like the sun when the sun is at its brightest. It's noon. Darkness came over the whole whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, Lema Sabakini, which is translated, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And we talked about this before. Um, Jesus is quoting David, but he's still asking the question. Once again, letting you know that in faith, he is totally obedient. He doesn't understand it. So when people say Jesus is all knowing, no, he's telling you right here, he's not all knowing. He does not understand this. But this is part of complete obedience 
Just like when he was in the garden. He wasn't quoting, I don't think he was quoting David when he says, hey, God, if it's possible, can you make this cup pass for me, please? I don't know if he was quoting David there. He didn't know. He doesn't know the full score. But this is obedience, full faith obedience of Jesus. That's what makes him like the Superman. Okay. Why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing there heard this, they said, look, he's calling for Elijah. Someone ran and filled a sponge with sour wine, fixed it on a reed, offered him a drink and said, let's see if Elijah comes to take him down. So now right here, um, I'm, I'm just still not sure. I'm not sure the attitude of this person when he does that. I don't know if he's if he wants Elijah to come really want to. It's like, look, man, here, Jesus, man, dude, you look, you look terrible, man. Why don't you drink some of this wine and just and just stay alive long enough for, for, for Elijah to at least come and get you, right? Or maybe he's just being a total jerk. He said, ah, 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 here, here, suck down some of this vinegar. Uh, you know, may, hey, maybe Elijah come and get you. How about that, Jesus? What, 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 you know, so you know, maybe he's totally taunting. Probably is. And um, but once, but it just goes because this is right now. This is vinegar. So, and vinegar is most likely, it's most likely wine vinegar, but it's from the grape and Jesus cannot drink it. Um, I don't know if he, I don't know if Jesus can drink any kind of fermented drink, but I know, I know it can't be from the grape, anything, nothing. It can't be, it can't be no, can't be no grape jelly. So be, be, Jesus can't have like a peanut butter and grape jelly sandwich. He can't have that. Uh, he can't have no raisins. Uh, you know, he just, if it comes from a grape, he can't have it. So it's probably, you know, but like I said, you know, I think vinegar, any kind of vinegar, um, you know, Jesus can't, can't drink it. Um, but Jesus cannot partake in wine. Even at this right here, he th he's thinking that, oh man, I can, I can get him right now. I can get him right now with this wine. Because like I, I've speculated before, he might in this moment, just like Judas, he might have been possessed by the devil. The devil knows what's going on. The devil probably put it on his heart. Go get Jesus this wine and death will pass over him. And salvation cannot come. He doesn't, you know, he's not explaining all that, but that's what the, that's the motive of the devil. Give him this wine. Because if death passed over him, Jesus can't beat death. So, you know, it's a possibility, it's a possibility of why he, he tried to stick that sponge in his face. And Jesus let out his final cry and breathed his last. Then the curtain of the sanctuary was split in two from top to bottom. And the centurion was standing opposite him. He saw the way he breathed his last. This man really was God's son. There were also women looking for, on from um, a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James the younger, and Joseph and Salome. When he was in Galilee, they would follow him and help him. Many other women had come up with him to Jerusalem. Okay, now you got other gospels that will, you know, that have different details of what happened on the, on the cross there. Different uh, things that Jesus said just before he died. Um, but I want to, uh, I'm going to see if I can pull that all together without doing a bunch of, you know, flipping back and forth. Um, it says that in other gospels, it'll talk about, you know, how the sky became dark. And once again, like I said, I started off by uh, the saying when it was noon. Oh, there we go. When it was noon, <laughs> it says it right here. Sorry about that, guys. Um, we got 20, uh, 33, 33. And it, when it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. Okay. I wanted to touch on that. Here's the deal. And, and once again, some of y'all may have heard me talk about this before. Jesus right now is, uh, this right here paints a picture of Genesis. And a lot of people, you know, if you're if if if, you, if a person has a traditional, very traditional view of the Bible, I don't I don't read the Bible according to tradition. I don't I don't look at it from a humanistic view of what I think is right in the humanistic view. Even when we're trying to not to be humanist, you know, we still try to insert our own righteousness into it. And it's like, no, just, just read the Bible for what it says. Um let the spirit guide you for what it means. So when I, when I look at this, this tells me, this paints a picture of Genesis and Genesis paints a picture of this. When God starts out, when it says in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. We all know that part, right? I hope you do. So you got 
Darkness was over the whole earth. Darkness was. And when you break it down in Hebrew, and we're going we're gonna to talk about this a little bit. And don't let me, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to remember, guys. I'm going to try to remember that, um, you know, uh, uh, some, some stuff in a little bit. Hope, and, and say, hey, Zoe, don't forget that thing that you were going to talk about, even though I don't even remember right now what that thing was. But hopefully it'll come back to me. But look here. Um, darkness was over the whole earth. And when it says the earth was formless and void, see, that's, that's kind of like the fluffy way that, that it's been translated. You can get the original translated. They're, 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 not, they're not, you know, something that's totally hidden from you. Uh, but I want, you guys, I want you guys to think about this. It says the world was in chaos and waste. Marinate on that. It was in chaos and it was waste. Um, that's, how, that's how it breaks down. That's a further breakdown of what those words mean in the Hebrew. Um, but darkness was over the water. And then, of course, we know that God said, let there be light. Now, I, po I posit to y'all that that same darkness that had come over the world is the same darkness that came when it was noon. And, Ju and Jesus was dying on the cross. That same darkness had returned. Okay. Now, also, we know the, the covenant that God had made uh, with Noah. When, Noah. when God said, this is my reminder. I'm going to put a rainbow in the clouds to let you know that I will never judge the wor world by water again. And um, so that rainbow wasn't just a reminder for Noah. It was a reminder for God himself. God even said um, when I gather clouds together and I am ready to judge the world, I will see the rainbow and it will remind me of my covenant that I made with you. Um, so now this, it's almost like a fail safe because I mean, this is just, this is just how it works. You know, a rainbow is going to appear in the clouds. Uh, you know, when light passes through the water droplets and stuff like that, you're going to get a rainbow. You know, God fashioned it. This it wasn't like the first time a rainbow has ever appeared. You know, there's been rainbows. It's just that happens right now. I'm going to use I'm going to use the dynamic of the rainbow to remind me to not the flood to not flood the world over again. This is my covenant with you. And let's not forget why the world was flooded over in the first place because of all the wickedness. And now we're seeing the returns of the rainbow flags and things like that. All the wickedness that was in Noah's day, and the Bible says it will become like the days of Noah. We see those rainbow flags come back. But right here, um, the darkness is coming over. And remember, Jesus says, Jesus says, God, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. God's getting ready to judge the world again. Right? When Jesus is dying on that cross, God is getting ready to throw down. The sky just goes dark. He's getting, he's, God is getting ready to flood the world again at that, at that moment. It's getting ready. It's getting ready. To, uh, the bath of his wrath is getting ready to come down. Jesus is like, God, God, Father, don't, not right now. Forgive them. Forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Right now, Jesus is standing in the way of God pouring out his wrath the same way that Moses stood before God and says, God, don't wipe them out here. I know, I know you are smoke snorting naming right now, right, right now, but don't do it. Don't do it. So this is another instance of where, you know, you, uh, or this is a picture of that instance where Jesus is going to intercede and say, God, don't, don't wipe them out right now. You know, it's, it's this, let's, let's not do this right now. We, let's give them a chance. Let's give mankind a chance. God is very merciful. He's very forgiving because he relented. He's like, okay, okay, okay. We won't, we won't do this right now, but the day is coming. Um, so now let's get to uh, the burial of Jesus. And when it was already evening, because it was preparation day. You people, you got people who are trying to add this, uh, this day onto when Jesus was, you know, because he got it, he has to do three days and three nights in the grave. Um, but, and so people are trying to like do like this, you know, this wacky math or of, of calendars and days to try to say when Jesus went, was in the grave and stuff. And it's like, no, it's letting you know it's it's preparation day. You have preparation for the Passover, and you got preparation day for the Sabbath. So Jesus died preparation day. It's day one, night one. Then you got the Sabbath day. That's day two, night two. And then you got after the Sabbath. That's day three, but there's no night three. 
So people like try to do this. Well, maybe he was crucified here, or maybe he was risen here, or maybe it goes by the Gregorian calendar, or maybe it goes by the Jewish calendar. So they're trying to do all these things. It's like, no, no matter how, how you try to slice it, it's always going to be just three days and a deficit of one night. So you're going to have three days, two nights. And once, so I, I'll remind you guys, this is how this works. When Jesus died, it went dark for him for three days. He was where it was perpetual night for three of our days. So yes, he dies. That's night one, night two, night three. But he came back to us on day three. So Jesus was gone three full nights, just like Jonah was in the fish. Three full nights for where Jonah was, it was nothing but darkness. He was in darkness. He was in night for three days. So Jesus wasn't lying. He didn't. He, Jesus is good at math. He positioned. He's, he's very good mathematician, right? He's calculated how all these things are going to play out. So I don't think Jesus messed up when he did the math on the three days and three nights. OK, he, he's got this down. Um, so let's see. Now we got. The day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a prominent member of the Sanhedrin, who is himself looking forward to the kingdom of God, came and boldly went to Pilate and asked for Jesus' body. Look here, Pilate. I want you to give me the body of Jesus, man. Okay. All right. <laughs> I'm playing. Pilate was surprised that he was already dead. Summoning the centurion... He asked him whether he had died already. And one of the reasons why this is bold, guys. Let's see. What do we got? What do we got? Um, no, no. Kristen, I, I would say no. It's not, it's not a special Sabbath. It's, it's, it's the Sabbath. It's, just, it's, a, it's a typical Sabbath. Um, what makes the thing that makes this Sabbath special is that it just happens to line up with Passover. So you had preparation for Passover, and then Passover uh, uh, comes on preparation day for the Sabbath. This is how this lines up. Like I said, we don't have to do any 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 uh, math out here. We don't have to like uh, step outside to, to do too much math here. It's it's just how this lines up. This lined up perfectly. Good God is really good at lining up things. So um, those are your three days. So there's three days that Jesus was in the grave. Uh, if I if I may, in my humble opinion. Um, now, let's see. Another, now, this is one of the reasons why what, 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 uh, um, Joseph Arimathea was so, was so bold. Because he's asking to get Jesus and he's going to put him in a grave. That's like work. It's like, well, what, what you doing? What you doing? It's, it's nighttime, man. Passover. I mean, uh, uh, the Sabbath has started. What are you doing working? I'll tell on you. So Joseph Arimathea, uh, uh, this is bold for him. This is very bold for him to say, hey, give me the body of Jesus. I'm going to go put him in a tomb. It's like, uh, uh, excuse me, are, are you working on the Sabbath, man? Sundown, dude. No, no working. He's supposed to work right now. Um, so that was very bold of him to do that. After he went and took some fine linen, linen he took him down and wrapped him in the linen, and then placed him in a tomb, cut out of, of the rock, and rolled a stone against the entrance of the tomb. Now Mary Magdalene... And Mary, the mother of Joseph, were watching where he was placed. All right, I'm going to stop right there. And we got one more, one more chapter. We got chapter 16 of Mark. And uh, we'll, we'll take care of that. Uh, we'll take care of that on Sunday. Um, hey, you know what I was, um, I wanted to ask you guys maybe what you think. Because um, like I said, I'm just reading this, you know, chapter by chapter, verse by verse, uh, you know, so we can all, you know, dig on it together. Uh, and, you know. We're right there reading it. I'm not like kind of like doing some sermon where I'm like, you know, doing a, a, a concept on a, on a verse. We're just reading it verse by verse, y'all, so we can keep track, you know. And um, uh, but what I was thinking about doing is uh, I was thinking about doing it on Thursday. I don't know what, what I want to do it on Thursday or do it on Sunday. Um, I was thinking about doing like the New Testament, you know, keep on going through the New Testament with Mark on Thursdays and doing the Old Testament uh, starting with Genesis 1 on Sundays or vice versa. Do Genesis on uh, Thursday and do, uh, I mean, uh, do uh, the Old Testament on Thursday and doing uh, the New Testament on Sunday. Uh, you know, because there's <laughs> it's just, and just, and same thing with Genesis. Just do a chapter, verse by verse, chapter by chapter. Uh, it's, you know, I, I, I dig the Old Testament. I mean, the Old Testament just, it just, it just, neon lights, man, just tells you, who Jesus is, 
you know, who's coming and the pictures that it, that it paints uh, for you to expect uh, the Messiah is, it's amazing. And uh, the gen is deep, it's deep, y'all. And, uh, you know, when we talk about Revelation, Revelation isn't just a book of things to come. Revelation gives you the revelation of what was in the Old Testament. So when you read the Old Testament, you're like, man, I don't get this. Well, that's what Revelation is for. Revelation and the Old Testament help you understand each other. Um, so, you know, there's that. And so I want, I want to experiment with that. I want to explore that. And uh, hopefully you guys will like it because, you know, it definitely uh, it boogies on my brain. So, you know, I want to, I want to share that with you guys. And, uh, oh, and uh, just a, another quick bit of news, if, if I may. I'm happy to announce that I have finished all the instrumentation for uh, the, the next 20 pound sledge album. It's all done uh, for my sledgers out there. You know, those who, you know, who care? Uh, but anyway, <laughs> for those who keep up with, uh, with my band 20 pound sledge, all the instrumentation is done. Right now I just gotta, I, I need the right singer to, to come in and lay down the vocal tracks. So I'm actually still working on the lyrics, but, uh, but I gotta find the right singer. Uh, you know, and the right singer that that takes on a, a several different folds. You know, it can't just be somebody who can sing. Uh, you know, when it takes, you know, somebody who's in the faith. You know, somebody who doesn't hate America. Uh, you know, and somebody who's you know not some musician who's you know totally caught up with themselves and you know has to you know self medicate and all that sort of stuff. Uh, it takes the right person uh, to head up. You know, the sledge ministry. You know what I'm saying? So. Uh, but yeah, thank God, you know, it's done. I, I finished all the drum tracking. Uh, I've been laying down the drum tracks for, for a little bit. Uh, but uh, today, all of them, they're all recorded. Drum tracks are done. Got all the guitar tracks done. Got all the bass tracks done. Uh, so um, I'm stoked. I'm, I'm happy. I'm so looking forward to, uh, you know, sharing this next album with you guys. Um, you know, Divine Battery. Um, I mean, I, I, I'm so thankful to God for that album. Uh, I, I, I really dig it. It's, it's still, I know it sounds kind of narcissistic, but it's still one of my favorite albums to listen to. Divine Battery, uh, you know, if you haven't heard, I hope you guys get a listen, you know, if you're into uh, rock music. Um, and uh, I'm hoping, um, and, and I'm, you know, thankful to God that this next album, you know, will be just as, uh, you know, you know, gratifying for your, for your musical palette. And uh, so I'm really looking forward to sharing it with y'all. I hope you, you know, keep me, um, if you guys, if I may ask, you know, keep me in your prayers that, you know, I find the right people to staff 20 pound sledge. I can do all the stuff in the studio. It's just, you know, I got to be able to take it to the stage and I need players for that. Uh, so, you know, keep me in your prayers that I get the right players for the job. And that, uh, you know, people actually get to hear this work because, you know, a lot of my stuff is impeded to where, you know, people can't, you know, they're not aware of it. A lot of people, a lot of people still who've been following my work for years don't even know I'm in a band. You know, because it's, 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 it's like, or even like, so I didn't know you played guitar. I didn't know you were a musician. I got, even when I got like, you know, guitars and stuff like that, it was like, you know, I didn't know you played. And it's like, yeah, yeah, I'm in band. You know, anyway. Um, so give me any prayers that, you know, eyes will be open to what it is that I'm trying to share. You know, these things that the Lord has blessed me with to share with y'all and that people will see uh, what the Lord is, uh, you know, doing through, you know, even like someone like me. Uh, all right, y'all. Thank you guys so much for uh, tripping with me. We'll pick it up on 16. And uh, you guys have a fantastic week. God bless you. My prayers are out to you. Praying for uh, peace, joy, and prosperity for all y'all. Godspeed. Rock on. All right. Late.